I, I thought Chair Warren did a did a very good job of outlining um, the disadvantages of cryptocurrency. That's not really what I want to focus on. Um, and the challenge in terms of how our regulatory platforms deal with those disadvantages. I was reading an article the other day that made the point. Some may agree, some may disagree, but the uh, the quickest way to get rid of ransomware and what it's doing uh, to our various countries is to get rid of cryptocurrency. Um, I'm 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 not sure I'm ready to go that far, but I thought it was a salient point. I jotted down a few notes, which I'm I'm going to refer to here. I don't normally do this, but I want to uh, I want to be as concise as possible so we can can get to our uh, our witnesses. Uh, this is an important topic. Uh, this is a, I see this as an opportunity today to explore uh, 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 the advantages and disadvantages of a central bank digital currency. As Chair Warren uh, uh, referred to, we call that uh, CBDC. I, I agree with her about the need for another acronym. Uh, will it work for the United States? Will it work for the world? What value will it? If any, will it contribute to U.S. monetary policy and world monetary policy? Uh, technology continues to emerge in our financial system and specifically in our payment system. I think uh, the demand for digital payments and the influx of, uh, of what I'll call non-legal non tender, uh, like cryptocurrencies, to me, it's clearly going to uh, uh, continue to explode. Uh, these forms of payments, I think we all know, have operated outside our traditional payments infrastructure. As the uh, chair pointed out, they proved to be volatile. They proved to be controversial. They proved to be speculative. Uh, they proved to be subject to manipulation in some cases. Um, we've seen that with respect to Bitcoin. Uh, and uh, I don't mean just to pick on Bitcoin, uh, other uh, forms of cryptocurrency. Um, cryptocurrencies and stable coins, though, I think we have to, if we're honest with ourselves, we have to admit that they're on the rise. And we need to examine the risks that a decentralized currency would pose to the Federal Reserve's control of monetary policy. Maybe that's self-evident, but I think it needs to be stated. Uh, the United States is, is leading the world in innovation and technology. The United States dollar, and we're all very proud of this, has remained the world's primary reserve currency. We want to keep it that way. Many uh, governments around the world, as you know, are exploring a CBDC for use in today's digital world. I think the United States uh, should also do that, explore as we are doing. Um, but we have to understand, it seems to me, and I hope we'll learn more about this today, that uh, whether public demand exists, who would benefit most from a CBDC has to be asked. And who would benefit least and who wouldn't benefit at all and who would be hurt. And we also have to take an honest look at whether the juice is worth the squeeze when it comes to, to cost when it comes to security risks. Now, as we know, China has created its own digital currency. We've all read about it, uh, the digital yuan. It uses that, not the people of China, uh, who I have great regard for, but the government of China, which I have little regard for because it's run by a bunch of pirates. Uh, the government of China has used the digital yuan to monitor everyday transactions of its citizens. It has used it to broaden its massive surveillance system. I think there's a lesson there. Uh, additionally, China is using its CBDC to maintain greater control over its economy and to expand China's monetary influence in the world. And I think uh, we need to be mindful of that. And we've got to analyze the impl implications of a Chinese CBDC on global competitiveness, 
uh, on international commerce and the U.S. dollar's position as the global wor uh, world currency. Um, I'll, I'll try to cut through some of this. I, I'm also, I need to mention this. I'm very concerned. I don't want to overstate it, but it's a question that has to be addressed. Proposals that uh, would use the CBDC to, uh, to, to fundamentally change our current banking system. Um, I think we need to explore that. I'm, I'm not convinced that uh, CBDC should be used to replace the paper dollar or to replace bank deposits. Uh, if the U.S. chooses to hold a CBDC, it, it needs to do so, it seems to me, in a way that complements our current financial system. Uh, there was a superb article in, uh, I think, The Economist last week or the week before last that talked about uh, a CBDC, not just as a payment system, but it's its implications for the credit markets. Um, do, do, do we want the federal government to get into the business of credit? And if it does, what does that mean for our commercial banking system? So I guess my point is we need to strike the right balance. We need to ask the hard questions. We need to listen and learn. And I want to thank our witnesses for being here today and for um, sharing some of their time and, and educating us. Thank you, Madam Chair.